The meta in League is the meta for a reason. With the player base as big as leagues, most of the strongest picks and builds get found out pretty quickly, and that's what becomes the meta. But that's definitely not always the case. There are always some weird builds and off-meta picks that just pop up that are super strong, yet are not played often. Look at the Riftmaker Vein build. That build has been possible for about two years now, and it now only recently became a thing. With the preseason just now arriving, there are way, way more possibilities now for finding that new hidden OP tech, and I'm sure that we've all run into at least a few teammates that put the int in experiment. We've been hard at work too, doing our own fair share of testing and sometimes griefing in process, and have finally found a few that we think are worth sharing. My name is Nathan Ng, and today we'll be talking about the 5 super OP preseason builds that you can try out ASAP. But before we get into the main course for today, I just want to take a minute to remind you that while meta videos and our other content are great ways to pick up some quick tips, if you're super serious about improving, you should head over to ProGuides.com. Our coaching staff is made up of top level players and are available 24-7, so it's always a good time to stop by. And just for $7.99 a month, you can take your Pro Guides experience to the next level. Our premium sub gives you access to all of our courses and bootcamp content, and we'll even throw in a 10% coaching discount. If you're ready to take your gameplay to the next level, trust me, it's worth every penny. Now, let's look at the sleeper builds. The first one that we'll be talking about is for Darius. If you've been playing this preseason, you know that one thing people are trying to force is tank mythics on everyone, and I mean everyone. Of course, I expect to see it on champs like Akali and Yone. People love to try to hide their lack of mechanics on hard champs like those by going full tank builds and just sitting in the middle of fights and doing nothing. But Jinx, Soraka, these items are not meant to be built on everyone. And it's not just that people are building tank mythics on everyone, but it's also the choice that they're going with. Hard Seal is one of the most overbuilt items I've ever seen on League. For one, the item is definitely best built second or third. When you rush it, you're getting a big block of HP with no resistances, and a passive that isn't very good in extended trades, unless you're playing a round. It's really only good on a few extremely high HP champs, like Scion and Cho'Gath, and even then, only in certain situations. Now back to our man Darius. Darius is still doing fine with his traditional Mythics, Trinity Force, and Stride Breaker, but you can make him even better with new options. Again, he's another champ where the most commonly built of the new Mythics is Heart Seal, but his performance with it is terrible. But Jack Show and Iceborne Gauntlet, on the other hand, are really good on him. The one you go with sort of depends on what you're dealing with. Jack Show is all around an extremely broken item after the hotfix buffed it, and should be your general go-to versus other melee champions when you plan on team fighting in the mid to late game. But Gauntlet is a really good answer to ranged champions. There's one reason for this. If you read the tooltip, Gauntlet doesn't just slow enemies in the circle. It also applies a slow that's twice as strong on your primary target, so even if they blink or dash away, you can not catch up to them. It kind of fills the same niche as Stridebreaker, but makes you a lot beefier, so you can comfortably teamfight without being blown up. Honestly, there are a lot more champions than Darius that can abuse this. Even bruisers like Jax, Fiora, and Camille can really make use of it when laning against foes like Bane and Uxian. Anyway, let's take a look at the full build that you want for Darius. For your runes, you'll run Conqueror, Triumph, Tenacity or Alacrity, Last Stand, Bone Plating, and Unflinching. For your sat runes, bring Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Armor or Magic Resist. For your items, we have two different builds, one for each Mythic. For the Iceborne Gauntlet build, you'll want to build towards Gauntlet first, picking up Steel Caps along the way, and then building up Black Cleaver. After that, go for Death Stance, Dead Man's Plate, and Force of Nature. For Jack Show build, you don't want to rush it. First, you want to go Ravenous Hydra, pick up your Steel Caps or Merc Tread second, and then work towards Jack Show. I hope I'm really pronouncing that right. Anyway, after that, go for Dead Man's Plate, Seraph Gauge, and either Force of Nature, Black Cleaver, or Stone Plate, whichever suits your game's needs more. The next build they'll be looking at is the right way to play Hecarim. The build that we're going for here basically makes him a glass cannon with high AD, some lethality, and tons of ability haste for maximum spam. The build here isn't exactly some unheard of super secret tech. In fact, you've probably seen at least some form or variation of it by now. But still, the overwhelming majority of Hecarims are building him incorrectly, so we feel like we need to clarify what the right way is. The first thing is to stop forcing Divine Senderer every game. This item is absolutely bait on Hecarim. Eclipse has been the better option on him for quite a while now. Yes, even when the enemy team has a beefcake or two in it, Eclipse is overall going to be the better option. For one, it gives percent pen, and two, it gives more healing in team fights. The other option is Duskblade. If you're super fed and the enemy team is all squishies, this item can actually make you a team fighting monster. But it's not just the mythics that people are getting wrong on him. So many people try to build some weird damage hybrid tank build on him that just ends up doing nothing. Your items should mostly lean towards damage, with a couple of options like Death's Dance or Serax that add a little bit more of damage soaking. Okay, let's just look at the full build that you want for Heck. 
For your runes, run Phase Rush, Nimbus Cloak, Celerity, Water Walking, Eyeball Collection, and Ingenious Hunter, with the set runes being Double Adaptive Force and Health. For your items, grab the Gust Walker in most games, and Moss Sopper if you feel like you really need it. On an early recall, grab Terra and start stacking it, then grab Lucidity Boots and work towards Ravenous Hydra. Once that's done, grab Manami. Your third item should either be Duskblade or Eclipse depending on the enemy comp. The next item is the start of the build. The newly reintroduced Spear of Shoujin is absolutely busted on Hecarim, making his Q basically not have a cooldown. Her last slot is situational. Blood Cleaver is a good general item, but you can also go for Death Stance or Maw if you really need that bit of durability. Our next build is from Master Yi. When the topic of tank mythic spilling over to other classes comes up, it should be no surprise that he's one of the top offenders. Much like we've seen throughout Season 12 with Sunfire Cape, Yi is able to start building legendary items to just give him the usual insane damage, then top it off with Jack Show to beef up a bit. This makes his team fighting much easier to pull off for the Yi player, and way more frustrating for the opponents to have to deal with. Another thing working in Yi's favor is just the general state of the meta. Junglers that lean towards farming up and skilling are overall better right now, and no one does that better than Yi. Also, with so many people trying to play tanks or building their items on other champions, there's a lot of beefy targets out there. Between Blade of the Rune King and his E, Yi is absolutely gonna shred through them. Next, let's look at the full build that you'll want from Master Yi. For your runes, run Lethal Tempo, Triumph, Alacrity, Last Stand, Eyeball Collection, and Treasure Hunter, with the stat runes being Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Health. For your items, take Moss Stopper for your companion, Rush Berserker's Griefs, and then build Blade of the Rune King and Ginsu's for your big damage core. After that, go for Jack Show, and make sure that your last two items is a mix of damage and durability. The general go-tos are Death Stance and either Guardian Angel or Wit's End, but you may need to flex the items depending on what you're up against. Now let's take a look at a pretty OP Orn build. He does just fine with the standard Jack Show and Iceborne Gauntlet, but if you want to be a real team player, the secret sauce for him is Radiant Virtue. This mythic synergizes perfectly with Orn. With a lot of tanks, once they dive into a fight, they thrive in the extended battle. This is why other mythics are a lot better on them, but with Orn, the vast majority of his use in team fights comes from engaging with his ultimate. Afterwards, he's just sort of there. So by building RV, you're going to be giving your teammates much more power to move in and then just follow up on your engage. Since Orn is already such a team-oriented champion, with half the reason for picking him being to upgrade your team's mythics, it's just sort of going to go with this whole vibe. Now, with all that being said, you don't want to build it in every single game. Specifically build it when you're up against a lower threat foe that will let you farm up and play for team fights later. If you're dealing with a more aggressive opponent like Camille or Fior that may force fights against you, you probably have to go Gauntlet or Jack Show for more 1v1 strength. Finishing off our list, we have the build that makes Ivern a really strong pick in the jungle. Between the later Scuttle spawn timer and Ivern getting a really big hotfix buff, he's actually one of the strongest early game junglers in the game right now. This is a big deal for him, since Ivern's only real weakness has always been a super fragile early game. Now you're able to easily full clear your jungle and still make it in time to pick up one of those crabs. And with the build that you'll be going, he's basically an AP bruiser, dealing good damage, being hard to bring down, and just being overall super disruptive. Now, obviously due to how Ivern works, you're very rarely, if ever, going to be absolutely 1v9 in games. At the end of the day, he's a pretty supportive pick, and while he does do a decent amount of damage, he's mostly there to facilitate allies in winning fights. So don't get discouraged when you have the occasional game here or there where you just can't carry. Yeah, other champions have a higher ceiling, but over the course of dozens of games, he's going to get you some pretty consistent results. Now, let's look at the build that you'll be going for. For runes, run Dark Harvest, Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collection, Relentless Hunter, Transcendence, and Gathering Storm, with stat runes being Ability Haste, Adaptive Force, and Health. For your items, take Gus Walker as your companion, and rush Lucidity Boots and Dark Seal. After that, start building into Rod of Ages. Once that's done, if your team is already pretty ahead, upgrade Dark Seal to Magi's before grabbing Cosmic Drive. If not, build into Cosmic, then go for Magi's. After that's done, your next item is Gravidon Seth Cap. Your last slot is flexible. The general option is Zanya's Hourglass, but you can always go for one of the healing and shielding items instead, or just go for some other AP item. Whatever suits your game's needs, really. Anyway, that wraps up things for our 5 Sleeper OP preseason builds. I hope at least one of these catches your interest. If you try any of them out, be sure to come back and let me know how it goes. And if there are any builds that you think are Sleeper OP, please also let us know in the comments below. I can't wait to see you guys back in the next video, but until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.